Welcome back. It has been quite some time since another video has been put out, but here we have a cool, cool car. Let's move these cans the back in. They hide that sun. Bam! Three lights each side. This is a 1970 Cyclone GT, not a spoiler. The fenders are just hung on the car. They're not mounted in place, so don't nitpick the alignment. It doesn't have hood hinges on it. I bought it sight unseen. Got a great deal on the car. Had no idea if it was going to be a total rust bucket or what, but it turned out to be a pretty solid car. I did a little buffing on this thing. Somebody had painted it 15 years ago and it sat, but where it counts, this thing is rock solid. All in the jams here. Perfect, guys absolutely perfect one little hole there it's peanuts all up in here everything nice underside looking good the thing with these cars is, is you want to get one that has as much as you can for shifter brake booster and master cylinder z bars over there one of the I don't know what the hell it is. I know it's got to do with the headlights. Um, the trim for the nose is in the car somewhere. Hell, I thought it was in here. Here's the two pieces for the outside. The bracket for mounting the nose. You got the vacuum canister right there some interior parts some other stuff that doesn't go to a cyclone all the gaskets they're old but they still go to the car oh there's the there's the nose trim here it is that's a rare piece anything on this car is rare to be honest once again where it's where it needs to be solid it's solid all in the jam here Everything solid solid floors now both floors have had patches put in in the front the rears are solid See that see the clutch pedal four speed guys Doors solid seats are near mint Here's the side that's in the Sun I can buff. I buffed all up to the roof line there and about to where that scuff is. The only real body damage on the car is right in here. There's a bit of a, a dentish area. It's more proud than anything. And then this dent in here, which went all the way down to there. That's where some genius side swiped it in his garage with a little riding lawn mower but it's all, all original glass in the whole car except for the windshield. Same thing on here, solid where it counts. Where it needs to be, it's solid, man. Hell, we even where it doesn't need to be in the floors. Floors are solid now. I mean, they got a patch in them. Somebody put a patch up to here. I know they make this section, they don't make that section. Or maybe they, yeah, they do make that section, but it only goes up so far. Um, any old who. These are original seats. I mean, 51 years old. The, the tracks slide up and down. You got the little pedestals. Excuse me. The little pedestal that the back seat has to sit on. Or the back corner. So it can be level. I have all the door panels. They're perfect. Not a, not a freaking scratch or, or anything on them. I mean, they're, it's like somebody took them off and left them in the car. Headliner. To me, I know what a pain in the ass it is to get somebody to put this headliner in and it's good enough. I would run with it. I would not 
try to have somebody put a new headliner in this thing. This thing's documented, Marty Report. All right, this is going to be a little weird on this segment because I'm holding my cell phone while I'm trying to record this book. And it's going to be a challenge to look at the book, look at the camera, and keep it going without it glaring. This is what I found in the quarter window of the Cyclone. Now, anyways, this is my car. This is what it would have looked like, red and black. But this was really cool. I know you Cyclone guys have seen this a million times, but it was really cool to find it in my car. Now this one's got a 351 badge on the side, but my car was a 429 Cobra Jet. But what's funny is when I walked outside earlier, I was under the impression that Cobra Jet cars came with the vents in the back and the Ram Air in the middle. But hey, please correct me. I'm learning. Let me know. Uh, but this is an ad. I, it could have been just a prototype thing. I'm going to set that aside because I'm not going to be able to put it back in with one hand. But this is what I found in the car. Okay. This is the original little owner's book. And there's the gentleman there. I don't want to zoom in on it for too long because, you know, just out of privacy. I know the man's passed away, but, but still. Um, Anyways, this guy special ordered this car. Now I'm going to turn the camera off, turn it back on so we can Here go. Here we are vertical. This is the original, original window sticker, I believe. Um, but I could be wrong anyways. Or maybe it's the, I don't know, because look, it says sold to Randall and Blakely Incorporated, 1000 West Taylor Street, Griffin, Georgia. I believe that was the dealership. Okay, so what we got here is a Cyclone GT two-door hardtop eight-cylinder. Base price is thirty-two twenty-six. So with that base price Cyclone, uh, at no extra cost, you got concealed headlamps. That is super cool. High back bucket seats, competition handling package. Tone on tone, lower body side paint, so that would be, I believe, the black on red that my car originally had. Dual race and mirrors, that's the same thing as my 72 Mach 1. High level uh, ventilation system, I, I don't even know what the hell that is. Car, it was red. The color was candy apple red or bright red. It doesn't look all that great, but it's cool. Okay, so now for $310.90 extra on top of the base price, we got the Cobra Jet 429 four barrel. Then for another $194.30, the man checked the box for the four speed manual transmission, which was a uh, close ratio, according to the Marty report. Uh, we got traction lock differential for another $42.80. Um, at no extra charge, we got the G70 by 14 traction tires. That's, uh, that's the, uh, beauty ring and dog dish center cap style wheel that I have. A uh, Ram Air induction, which was $64.80. I know you can read this, but it's so much cooler if I read it to you. Center console, $55.70. Power front disc brakes, $64.80. AM FM stereo radio because I got the dual speakers in the back $212 you believe that for an AM FM stereo radio it's almost as much as getting a freaking Cobra Jet 429 option that's insane dual rear seat speakers oh my god that's literally just for the head unit so for the rear speakers $27.30 Tinted glass all the way around, complete, $36.30. Styled steel wheels, 14-inch. That's the ones I got. Beauty rings, center caps for $13. And the instrument group, $77.80, which I believe is the gauges that are basically on the passenger side of the car that are pointed at you. So with transportation charges at $105, total cost, $4,431.20. 
So for $4,400, you had one bad ride. There's the uh, Venn uh, Lorraine assembly method of transport, port railway, dealer number, all that stuff. Okay, sold to this gentleman here, Clarence Wendell Powell, on May 13th, 1970. Let's go back one minute, see if there's a date on this. No date. If there was, it was it's gone now. So here's what he paid for the car. He got a pretty good deal. Got about $500 off, $3,925.91. Ignition lock, rear deck lock, color red, body code, boo ba da boo Bank of Fulton County, Georgia, cash paid for that car. Really, really cool. Um, let's see. Nothing really here different from what we saw on the other page. So I'm guessing no dealer option add-ons there. This was something I found in the car, Automotive Adventures, Inc. I don't really know what this is. Um... Uh, but it just has something in Macon, Georgia, I guess. They're giving you an appraisal on the car. Uh, let's see, what's the date? 91 collectible vehicle. Back then, you could get a 429 uh, Cyclone spoiler. They would suggest a price of $11,750. Man, I wish you could buy one for that now. Rare, 429 four-speed Cyclone GT old cars value guide condition was a three i don't know what the number range went to here was a little warranty card you know that's cool that's cool i wouldn't go buy it but i have it and i like it that's cool here's the original receipt where the man i guess either paid for the car or put down a deposit no he paid for it 38 25 i think he put a hundred dollar deposit down which was here, because uh, you see the car was thirty nine twenty five, and he came back and got his receipt for thirty eight twenty five. So he put a hundred dollar deposit for the car and then came back and paid for it. This was cool. This was neat. From Ford, if you get this little book, tell you about how to use your spare tire and your jack and all that. But it was something you could put in the window says send help need gas you just open it up and put it in your back window <laughs> you know because people were willing to help people back then <laughs> not today you stand there with your thumb out they're going to run right back past you so here's something about your am fm stereo and operating that in your car here's your little warranty book whatever's in there consumer information Seat belts and shoulder harness are for your protection. Here was the original Georgia title, which anybody who's bought an old car from Georgia knows that's about inexistent. Nobody keeps a title in Georgia for some reason. Here was a uh, registration. It's so faded out you can barely see it, but I kept it anyways. A uh, couple of receipts and some insurance cards from the original one of the owners, not the original. Uh, Mr. Curtis Thompson, I think that was the third owner or fourth owner. Um, it changed hands a few times. This is where he went to Sam's and got some tires, I think. Got some radials. Here's got a mountain balance, dismount and balance. Got another set of tires, somebody did. Uh, Meineke, he got an exhaust put in and some tires. Uh, let's see here. I can't remember what this one is. I think it's another registration. When it switched owners, yeah. It went from uh, Mr. Thompson to Mr. Mike Foster. There's uh, something else from Mr. Curtis. Got a transmission. I don't even know if that went to this car because it says 400-something with shift kit. And this didn't have a 400 turbo hydromatic. Here's... A bill of sale I found from back in 92. Uh, 
this gentleman here, David Morgan. I don't know who that is, but uh, yeah, he owned the car at some point back in 92. Uh, here's another one where somebody bought the car for $3,650 from somebody else. And it was inside of these two things here. It looked like a old bank booklet and bank clip thing. And the old envelope. I thought that was neat. Documentation from the original owner and whatever, how many owners it had. Now these noses... These grills are known to be busted apart and screwed up, and it's got its fair share of repairs on it. This corner piece is in the house. The front grill, I mean the front bumper is not there. These are the original wheels. All, all the beauty rings, all the center caps are there. They're 14s. The 14s are kind of lame. I'd much rather have 15s on there. That's why I have the Magnums. Those go on my Mustang Mach 1. Alright, so here's a little footage of the old Cyclone here. It's got the rim blow steering wheel. I'm missing some of these old trim pieces here, but I hear the Scott Drake site has that stuff. Um, got some goofy radio, some cabbaged up wiring here I'm going to have to go through. Um, but really... Dude, I'm not sweating. This this headliner is super clean. It's dusty. You see my finger marks that I just drug through it. In the back, back there, yeah, it's come up. Yeah, so what? I don't care about that. They make a package tray now for this car, which is really cool. There's my door sill plates and the wire covers. I've got my uh, interior panels that go on the car. I just bought some more Pour 15 so I can do the rest of this floor. But I'm going to wait on that. Now it was modified. Somebody took this car. And they put a 400 modified in it. Something I want to touch on that I learned from a buddy of mine, Dean. Is that 70s have a small diameter gun sight. On 71 it, it's much bigger much bigger piece there now please guys please you see this this crimp that crimp this some genius moved the car with a forklift please do us all a favor and don't do stupid stuff like that please but if you can see in here there's some weird thing mounted on the perch that was so they could put a 400 modified if you see that, see the goofy hole in the shock tower for the Zerk fitting? Don't do that. Please, please, get help. Don't do that. So here's how the car sits today. Yes, it's three different colors because I'm trying to figure out what color I'd like to shoot it. Which means, referencing what I said previously in the video, if you didn't catch the title, yes, I am going to paint it. I have decided that, but what color, I don't know. Anyways, thanks for checking this out. I know it was a little dry in some areas, but, uh, you know, it's kind of nerdy stuff, and I like that. So if you can, like it, comment, maybe subscribe, tell your friends, something like that. I really appreciate it. Anything you do helps. Have a good weekend, guys.